Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We have so much to be thankful for. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Listen, let, let, let's get right into the Word here. But, but right, right before we do, let's welcome all of our first-time visitors, those that are visiting with us for the first time today. <laughs> Hallelujah. We want to welcome, we want to welcome you. Turn with me in your Bibles. Just give me a few minutes. I'm going to give them, I'm going to give you, give you, give me 20 minutes, I'll give you 10 of them back. <laughs> Turn with me to Jude, Jude, I'm sorry, Judges, Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6, and we're going to begin at verse 33. Judges chapter 6, beginning at verse 33. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Bless His name My soul loves Jesus I got some old school saints in the house today. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. Let's Judges chapter 6. Beginning at verse 33, if you have it, signify by saying, I got it. Where do the Lord reads? Then all the Midianites and the Amalekites, the people of the east, gathered together, and they crossed over and encamped in the valley of Jezreel. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. Then he blew the trumpet, and the Abyssalites gathered behind him. And he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, who also gathered behind him. He also sent messengers to Asher, Zebulon, and Nephtali, and they came up to meet him. So Gideon said to God, if you will save Israel by my hand as you have said, look, I shall put a fleece of wool on the threshing floor. If there is dew on the fleece only, and it is dry on all the ground, then I shall know that you will save Israel by my hand, as you have said. And it was so. When he rose early the next morning and squeezed the fleece together, he wrung the dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water. Then Gideon said to God, do not be angry with me, but let me speak just once more. Let, let me test, I pray, just once more with the fleece. Let it now be dry only on the fleece. But on all the ground, let there be dew. And God did so that night. It was dry on the fleece only, but there was dew on all the ground. Wow. Can you say amen? amen. Today we're going to continue in our conversation titled, Ordinary People, Extraordinary Assignments. I need you to hear me this morning, family. Extraordinary assignments require divine assistance. If you're going to do something extraordinary for God, you can't do God's work without God's help. And I want you to know this morning that people may look at you as ordinary, but I believe that God has something extraordinary that He's called for you to do. Let's give God a hand clap of praise right there. Pray with me right here, if you will. Father God, we thank you today for your grace and your mercy. We have so much to be thankful for. You've been so good to us, Lord God. You've brought us this far, and you've kept us and protected us. And so we've come, Lord God, to hear a word from you. We ask that you would speak to us, Lord God, from the volume of the book. Speak to our hearts and to our minds, that we may be changed thereby. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would help me now to declare your word to these, your people. I can't speak without, to them without you first speaking into me. So use my tongue to declare to your people the words you would have for them to hear. 
May they receive them, and may they be changed by them. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Somebody say, ordinary people. Extraordinary assignment. Family, on last week we had a family discussion uh, about a word that's not mentioned much in our 21st century church, and that is the word anointed. Say it with me, anointed. anointed. People in the Bible are often anointed in recognition of the Lord's divine calling upon their lives. And so the anointing in antiquity was uh, a physical recognition of their particular role or their particular assignment or their particular office. And so you will recall that when Samuel came to Jesse's house to select the next king, he had to anoint David as the king. So the kings were anointed. The prophets, before they began their divine assignment, the prophets were anointed. The priests, before the priests began their divine assignment, the priests were anointed. You find that in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, whenever you see the word anointing, oftentimes it's talking about the presence of the Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, uh, when you say Jesus Christ, I need you to understand that Christ is not his last name. The word Christ is the Greek translation of the original Hebrew word for the word Messiah. And so when you look in your Bible in the Gospel of John, particularly John chapter 1, verse 41, it says, we have found Messiah, translated Christ. So whenever you hear the word Christ throughout the Bible, when you read it, it, which it, it, it appears almost 500 times in the New Testament, you are literally hearing the word Messiah. And so then the word Messiah and the word Christ means the anointed one. Are y'all with me this morning? This anointing, hear me family, is available to any man and any woman who has set their heart toward Jesus Christ, who have accepted him as their personal Lord and Savior, believe that he is the Son of God, that he died, that he got up with all power in his hand, and that he's coming back again for you, and that you have accepted his gift of the Holy Spirit. The anointing family of the Holy Spirit enables members, it enables people to minister God's Word, to operate under God's anointing. It helps you to discern between truth and between error. Somebody shout, I am anointed. And this is why this story of Gideon is so apropos to this lesson that we're talking about today. God, He selects Gideon for a divine assignment. But Gideon had a little trepidation about that assignment. And so we start out here in Judges chapter 6, verse 15. Gideon said, Oh, my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. When God gives you an assignment, oftentimes we do as Gideon did. And we ask God the question, God, how can I do this? How can I start this business? How can I forgive this person? How can I start this ministry? How can I do it? And I have an answer for you this morning. You can't do it without God's help. But with God, you can do all things. Can somebody say amen? amen? And so, God finds Gideon. He's hiding in a wine press. He's hiding there because the Bible tells us that the Midianites were plundering the children of Israel. They were coming in and they were taking all of their crops, all of their harvests, taking all of their goods. So in order to hide their goods from the Midianites, they were in dens and in caves. And so God comes there and he finds Gideon there. And so now, watch this. Before God can give him his assignment, God first has to deal with how Gideon sees himself. Before God can give us our assignment, he has to deal with how we see ourselves. So here it is. He tells Gideon, 
The angel of the Lord came to Gideon and told Gideon in Judges chapter 6, verse 12. He says, the Lord is with you. Watch this. You mighty man of valor. But for Gideon, he didn't feel like a mighty man of valor. He's hiding in a cave. He's hiding in a den. And now God comes and calls him a mighty man of valor. But his circumstances didn't look like he was a mighty man of valor. The angel said God is with you, but his situation didn't feel like God was with him. Can I tell you this morning that your anointing is not about a feeling? The Bible says, watch this, that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So I'm not going to arrive at my point of purpose, watch this, just because I'm anointed for it. I will arrive at the place of my thinking. Are y'all hearing me this morning? And so there are many of you under the sound of my voice this morning, you have been anointed by God. Come here, I'm talking to you to do great exploits. You have been anointed by God to do powerful things. But the problem is you don't think so. So my question for you this morning, come on, stay with me. I got five more minutes. Here it is. Do you think you are the head and not the tail. Do you believe in your heart that God has anointed you to be above and not beneath? Do you believe that you can be a lender and not a borrower? Do you believe that you are blessed and not cursed? I'm looking for somebody that believes that I'm blessed in the city, I'm blessed in the field, I'm blessed when I come, and I'm blessed when I go. Because here it is. Until you start thinking it, you won't realize it, although you are anointed for it. Somebody shout, I'm anointed. I'm anointed. It's all right, family, for you to be confident in your anointing. It's not, it's not arrogance. It's not self-confidence. It's actually, it's God confidence. <laughs> God confidence looks like, here it is, I can do what God said I can do. I can be who God said I can be. I can possess what God said that I can possess. I need you this morning to start owning your identity. I need 23 folk to just shout, I am anointed. Here it is. Here it is. So watch this. Watch this, watch this, so, so, so here it is, so now God calls Gideon, I'm almost where I'm going, God calls Gideon a mighty man of valor, but because Gideon didn't see himself that way, God has to now reveal to Gideon who he really is. Right. To reveal means to uncover. To reveal does not mean, watch this family, to add something that does not exist. To reveal means to take the lid off something that's been there the whole time. <laughs> see, what I'm trying to get you to see is that you've been anointed the whole time. You just need somebody to have faith in you, have trust in you, and have confidence in you so that you can walk in the anointing that you possess. And so here it is. In order to get Gideon in the place that God wanted him to be, God has to give Gideon a series of signs. Yeah, whenever it is that God has called you to do something and you're not quite sure that, that, that you can do it, God has to give you a series of signs. The first sign that God gave him can be found in Judges chapter 6, verse 17. He says, then he said to him, this is Gideon speaking, if now I have found favor in your sight, then show me a sign. Watch this, that it is you who talk with me. Gideon wanted to make sure that the voice he was hearing was the voice of God. I need to talk to somebody this morning. Before you make any moves, make sure that the voice you're hearing is the voice of God. Before you make any moves, I need you to make sure it's not emotion, make sure it's not revenge, make sure it's not fear, 
Make sure it's not pride. I can't get no help in here. Make sure it's not lust. Make sure that what you're doing, you're doing it because you've heard the voice of God. And so watch this. Well, watch this. So, so, so then Gideon, in verse 22 of that same chapter, chapter 6, Gideon perceived that it was the angel of the Lord that was speaking to him. So now Gideon builds an altar, and he called it the place of peace. He called it the Lord is peace, which is Jehovah Shalom. Come here, let me, let me talk to you. When you are doing something that you know God told you to do, you can have peace. You can have a peace that passes all understanding. People may not understand why you're doing what you're doing, but you got peace about it because you've heard the voice of God and you know God is the one that told you to do it. See, never forge God's divine name on an emotional check that you wrote. <laughs> Y'all not hear me? Because if you do, it will not clear. But if God said it, if God wrote it and told you to do it, you can take that to the bank because God's word shall not return to him void. Do I have any witnesses here today? that say, I can testify that it happened because God said it was going to happen. So, 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 so here it is. So, so, so the first sign, watch this. The first sign that Gideon wanted that you should want is God, is this you? Because I don't want to do it just because mama wants me to do it. I don't want to do it because my spouse wants me to do it. I don't want to do it because everybody's saying you're at that age or you look like you should do it. No, I don't want to do it, Lord, unless you tell me to do it. That's the first sign, but that was not enough for Gideon. Here it is. Here it is. Gideon wanted another sign. It's right there in the text in verse 36. So Gideon said to God, if you will save Israel by my hand as you have said, make the fleece wet and the ground around it dry. Come, come on now. I need y'all to see this. Now, he, 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 now, Gideon is not using the fleece because he don't know what the will of God is. He knows what the will of God is. He wants to make sure, come here, that if I do this, I need the assurance that your presence is going to be with me. He, he said the same thing that Moses said. I wish I had some Bible readers in here today. When God told Moses to go to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh to let my people go, Moses says, I will go only if you go with us. If you don't go with, I know what the assignment is. I accept the assignment, but I'm only going to take it if you go with me. It was David that said, listen, when he came home to Ziglag and all of his family was gone, David said, shall I pursue this truth? Because if you tell me to go, God, then I know that you're with me. It don't matter how big they are. It don't matter how much money they have. It don't matter how long they've been in a position. If God goes with me, I wish I had somebody in here that understood that if God went with you. Here it is. So it is okay for you to ask God, come here. God, are you with me in this matter? It's okay. God, are you with me in buying this new house? God, are you with me in this marriage proposal? You, 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 you can't just go by what it feels like. It feels like the right thing. They're saying all the right things, but you better go to God and ask God, God, are you with me? in this endeavor. Because if God's presence is with you, then you have support. You have something that can back you up. I, I, I think I've told you this before, but, but I remember one, one night I was coming home uh, on a bus that would pick us up for skating. And, and when we were coming home from skating, somebody was behind me and they were throwing peanuts and just hitting me in the back of the head, just peanuts, just <laughs> and, you know, and I got a long head, it's hard to miss it, but they was just and, and, and I couldn't turn around. I was afraid it was so many of them. 
But as the bus began to park, my brother Mark was walking down the street. My brother Mark was a different kind of guy. He walked around 10 o'clock at night by himself. He's walking, twirling his cane with his do-rag on his head. And somebody said, is that your brother? When I saw my brother, I knew I had backup. So once I looked out the window and saw that my backup was there, I turned around and told that devil, you got one more peanut to throw at me. See, when you know you have backup, I wish I had somebody in here. The devil has been throwing stuff at you and you've been letting him get away with it, but I need somebody to shout, I got backup. Come here, here it is. So, 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 so watch this. Watch this, watch this. Gideon wants to know. I'm not saying that I'm afraid, but I need to make sure that I have your backup. I need to make sure that you're going to be with me. God assures him, watch this, that I'm going to be with you. Here it is. I need you to listen fast this morning. Here it is. He needed a third sign. It's right there in the text, verse 39. He, he, he says to God in un, no uncertain terms, he says, God, uh, I don't want you to be angry with me. Uh, don't, don't, don't be upset, uh, but I need another sign. Uh, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. Here it is. Uh, see, w w whenever ordinary people are given an extraordinary assignment, we want to go back and make sure, this is what I get out the text, that even if I mess up, you can turn it around. <laughs> so he comes to God. And Gideon says, God, now, don't be upset. I know I told you to make the fleece wet, but this time, could you make it dry? <laughs> and make everything around it wet? If you do that for me, God, th then I will know that you will be with me. See, see, those of you that always get it right the first time, you can just eavesdrop on this right here. But for those of us that know that we mess up sometimes and we need God to sometimes turn that thing around and make it right, even when we make it wrong, we need the assurance to know that even if I mess up, God can fix that thing. So here it is. So, 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 so here it is. God grants Gideon, watch this, all of his signs. And watch what God does and then I'm done. Here it is. God gives Gideon some signs toy that he didn't ask for. In chapter 7, God comes to Gideon after he'd gotten all of his people together. He sent out messengers to all the different tribes, and they sent people to help him fight this battle. And the Bible says that he had about 32,000 people. 32,000, that sounds like a big number, but when you read that, the Midianites, it says, was like the, the sand on the seashore. You couldn't count the people or the horses, but Gideon had 32,000. God comes to him in Judges chapter 7, verse 2, and he says, the people who are with you are too many. <laughs> For me to give the Midianites into your hand. Because if I bring this victory, they're going to say, we did it. Come, come here. I, I need you to see this. You got 32,000. You're already short. 32,000, a couple of million. 32,000, and then God comes and God says, you got too many. Because if I let you win with all of these people, you guys are going to say, I did this myself. My, my degree helped me get here. I got, I got here because I'm so smart. I, I, I got here because I'm the best in town at what I do. I'm, I, 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 I got here because I'm good at saving money. I, I, I got here. So now you start taking credit for what God did. But watch this. This is when God gives you an assignment, watch this, and then cuts your resources. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? It's when God, help me to preach it right, Holy Spirit. It's when God gives you an assignment and things start leaving. 
God gives you an assignment, and all of a sudden, now the bank don't want to approve your loan. He gives you an assignment, and the people that were with you start walking out. He gives you an assignment, and all of a sudden, your marriage was good before the assignment. But then once you get the assignment, now your marriage starts now falling apart. He gives you assignment. Your kids was over here making straight A's before you got the assignment. And now when you get the assignment, you got to go to the school. So, so, so what do you do when God gives you an assignment and it looks like you're going backwards? Here it is. Let, let, let me help you. This is a vetting process. God is showing you, come here, that everybody that says they're with you. Watch what God says. It's right there in the text. Watch what God says to him. God says, you, you, you got too many. He says, everybody that says they're afraid, everybody that says they're scared, give them permission to leave. Anybody that don't want to be there, give them permission to leave. Come here. Let me talk to you. I, I don't want you begging nobody to stay, nobody to help you, nobody. Come here. Nobody to fight with you, nobody to support you. You cried your last tear yesterday. Anybody that has made up in their mind that they don't want to be there, give them permission to go. Come here. Because you are crying to keep somebody on your team that won't fight with you. I know it looks good to have that many, but God knew that most of the people that were with Gideon were not going to support him. Come here. Let me talk to you. Put the phone down. Stop getting on Facebook talking about it. Stop getting on Instagram talking about it. Stop tweeting about it. Stop calling people talking about it. Just give them permission. Come here. Because some people, come here, some people that you think are with you, they are with what you do for them. And if you want to test it, if you want to test it, tell them no. Y'all don't want to. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. If you want to test it, if they're really with you or not, give them the test that Gideon gave them. So listen, if you're scared to be here with me, uh, you, you, you can go. Watch what happens. When Gideon gave them permission to leave. Watch this. 22,000 left. I'm out of my time, but y'all got to hear what I'm saying. He probably thought five or six or 10 or 15 may leave. 22,000. 68.7%. Of the people, God help me, that he thought that they were down like four flat tires, that they went back like Cadillac seats. Come on, somebody. He thought they were going to be with them. But when he told them that they had permission to leave, 22,000 people left. And watch this. Here it is. And so now, picture Gideon. We were already short. Now we shout. 
I wish I had somebody in here. Now, now, now we, now we, now we real sure. Be, 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 because I thought for sure, I thought for sure that they came because they was with me. I thought for sure they went down the aisle and they said I do because they were with me. And this is why we talked about this yesterday in the marriage conference. Y'all, y'all got to come to the next one because I need to see some more people at the next one. But here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Why do you think you need a covenant in marriage? You don't need a covenant for something that ain't going to have no problems. The reason you need a covenant is because God in His divine providence knows that there are going to be some things that come up. But when they come up, are you going to stay with me? You're going to stay with me. I, I, know, I know that we're walking down the aisle today. But are you going to stay with me if you have to push me down now? Because if you not tell me right now, don't, don't wait till I get in my golden years to, for me to find out. Tell me today, 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 if you're not going to be with me through ups and downs, for richer and for poor, through sickness and in health. So watch this. Watch this. I'm almost where I'm going. Here it is, Mother Ann. He said, look, okay, so 22,000 left. Can't you picture Gideon? I ain't got but 10,000, but, but God didn't show me some signs, so I'm good. We can do it with, with he, he got to get ready. We can. Come on, y'all. I need to tell you, it's, it's going to be tough, but we can do it with 10,000. I, I think, I think it's going it's to be a little time. It's going to be a little rough, but. But then God comes. God, God, God comes in verse 4. God comes and he looks at the 10,000. And he says, you still got two minutes. <laughs> see, see, you're sitting there like, oh, how could Gideon d- doubt God? But how many of you, when it started getting short, you stopped doing what God told you to do. You were doing it when you had a whole lot. I can't get no help right now. But now it ain't got short. Now, now, now you're questioning God. God said, well, watch this. Here it is, Brother Gerald. I need you to do a vetting process for me. Take the 10,000 down to the water. There are going to be some, they're going to get down and they're going to lap like a dog. There are going to be some, they're going to get down on their knees and drink. And Gideon went down there. Can't you picture this? And he's looking at the 10,000 and he sees 300 of them get down and lap like a dog. And Gideon made up in his mind, that's the 300 I want. (laughs) I don't need the people that are too cute. I don't don't need the people. (laughs) Come on, somebody. I don't need the people that would sit there and say, it don't take all of that. Because when we get in this fight, I need some people that's willing to do whatever we got to do to make sure that we win. I'm looking for 300 folk in here today that say whatever we got to do to get what it is God said belong to us, somebody shall fight for it. Here it is. Here it is. That's what you want with you. You want people on your team that when the battle gets heated, when times get hard, when times get rough, you know this 300, if they got to get down and lick the water like a dog, that's what they're willing to do. So here it is, I'm done. So here it is, here it is, I'm done. Well, watch this, because it's not about the number. It's about the presence of God. Well, watch this, here it is, I'm over my time, I got to go. Let me just tell you how the story ends. Let me fast forward, tell you how the story ends. Here it is, and so they're getting ready to go to battle. Picture this with me. They're getting ready to go to battle. Yeah, Nicole, play, play, play with me, let me walk. They're getting ready to go to battle. 
I want my horn section to get, 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 get ready right here. And with 300 people against thousands of enemies, before Gideon goes to battle, read it when you get home. Judges chapter 6, verses 7, 8, and 9. Before Gideon goes to battle, Pastor Noah, Gideon went himself to see what it looked like. And when Gideon got down there, Minister Lewis, when he got down there, he heard somebody talking about it. When he got down there, he heard them saying, somebody said, I had a dream last night. It's in the text. And in my dream last night, because if you listen close enough, you are here who talking about you. He, 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 he leaned his ear in and hears somebody say, last night I had a dream that there was a barley of bread that came into the tent and killed everyone in the tent. And then he heard another person said, that sounds like Gideon. Gideon was like, that's all I needed to hear. He said, that sounds like Gideon. Gideon goes back and he tells the 300, watch this. He's passing out now their armor for battle. He gives them a trumpet and an empty jar with a torch in it. He didn't give them an M16. He didn't give them the best military technology. He gave them a trumpet and an empty jar with a torch in it. Why? Because Gideon knew that this battle is not ours. Watch this. Watch this. And I'm done. Gideon says, when I get there, he says, I want you to look at me. He says, he says, he says, and keep your eyes on me. And when I blow the trumpet, I, I want you to see it. Pull it up, media team. Uh, Judges chapter 7, verse 16. He says, then he divided the 300 men into three companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and torches inside the pitcher. Keep going, 17. And he said to them, look at me and do likewise. Watch. And when I come to the edge of the camp, you shall do as I do. Keep going. Give me 18. <laughs> when I blow the trumpet, and all who are with me, then you also blow the trumpets on every side of the whole camp and say, here it is. Here's your deliverance. The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. When I was studying yesterday, this is what the Spirit placed in my heart. I want you right now, everyone under the sound of my voice, even those that are watching online, I want you to get in your mind that thing that you've been fighting. Get into your mind that battle that you have that seems insurmountable. Get in your mind that thing that you know you can't beat unless you have some help. I want you to get that thing in your mind. And when they blow this trumpet, I want you to shout the sword of the Lord and put your name in there. Oh, come on, come on, come on. I want you to get it in your mind. If it's sickness, if it's disease, if it's problems in your marriage, if it's issues with your children, if it's issues on the job, if it's money issues, whatever it is, I want you to activate your anointing today. Because you've been running from that thing, you've been dodging that thing, you've been avoiding that thing too long, but God is going to give you the power to speak to it today. I want everyone standing to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Horns, on the count of three, I want you to blow. When they blow, I want you to scream at the top of your lungs, the sword of the Lord and of your name. And I want you to give God the biggest shout. I want you to wake up the neighborhood. How about that? One, two, three. Now give God a shout. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. 
Listen, watch this. Just because you can't see what's happening, I decree and declare that there's something happening in the spirit realm. Because the Bible said that when they blew the trumpet and when they called out that war cry, that God sent ambushments into the camp and they began to use their sword to cut one another. I decree and declare that that thing that the enemy tried to use to destroy you, God is going to make it backfire on them and he's going to give you the deliverance. Somebody give God a shout in this place. I need, I need about 23 folk to shout and declare with me. Say, I, I am anointed. Think about that thing that's trying to pull you down and say, I, I am anointed. The devil is trying to get you to give up, trying to get you to quit, but shout, I. Another hand clap of praise. I'm anointed. Here it is. I want you to know that the reason you're going to make it, the reason you're going to survive, because it's not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. You are going to make it because you are stronger than you think you are. You are anointed for this assignment. God allowed you to go through it because he knows that you can make it through it. And the same God that was with Gideon is the same God that's with you. So from this day forward, I want you to walk in the anointing that's on your life and believe that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Give God another hand clap of praise right there. I want you to lift your hand. I want you to lift your hand. I want you to lift your hand. Because there's some of you, you've been losing some stuff. And you was about to give up. There's some of you, the enemy been attacking your marriage. He been attacking your body. He been attacking your finances. Because he wants you to quit. But he's doing that because he knows you're getting ready to walk into something great. And I've come this morning to remind you that the anointing of the Lord is on your life. That you've already won. That you already have the victory. I know you lost some stuff. I know some people walked away. I know some people left you. I know they may have broken your heart. I know you may have lost some money. But I've come to tell you that you are anointed and you will win this battle. So right now as your hands are lifted, I command a blessing over your life right now. Father God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus by the authority and the power of the Holy Spirit that you would allow your people to understand that they are anointed, that they already have the power to overcome the thing that's trying to pull them down, that you've already equipped them, that everything that they've gone through in their life was preparing them for this very moment. Remind your people that you shall never leave them, nor forsake them. And from this day forward, let them walk in the anointing without fear, without guilt, and allow no one to talk them out of it. I decree that it is so in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord our God establish you and give you peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you, and remember, you are anointed, and you can have it. God bless you.